What's up guys, you're watching Poots Garage. This week we got some parts and got some new tools, so let's go at it. So last week's video was kind of a dud for me. I didn't get a whole lot done because I was sick. So this week I wanna try and make it up by actually finishing something. So this week we're gonna do the rear brakes. We're gonna try and get those completely finished up. So let me show you what we got going on. So this is what we're working with today. So we got my old brake lines up here. I got a couple new tools and then we got some new brake lines over here. So this is what we are doing. First thing I need to do is uh, we're not using these old brake lines like I originally planned on. So I need to take that off and I actually need to reuse this bracket, which looks like hell. So we're gonna have to clean that up, paint it. And then uh, I think I'm gonna modify it a little bit. This bracket was originally for, uh, it had the load sensing brake proportioning valve in the rear, which is a lot of guys know that GM actually had a recall and they just said pretty much get rid of it because it's just too many issues with the truck in general so most trucks don't even have that intact anymore but mine still has the bracket I didn't have the rest of it under there thank god now since I have all this extra junk on here I think I'm actually gonna cut that stuff off just because it's not necessary and even this whole bracket might not exactly be necessary but I'm gonna use it for now pretty much the only thing I'm looking for is my mounting point which goes into one of the diff covers uh, bolts and then uh, where my line is gonna mount to the end of the bracket looking under the truck this is the new brake line that I put on previously it's just installed it's mounted to the top at the factory location and on the bottom is gonna be going to that new bracket it'll sit back there on the diff somewhere and if you've been following along the reason I got to modify these lines is because we're doing the disc brake swap so this is the rear disc brake swap for a 14 bolt full floater from lug nut 4x4 so originally the brake lines came along they went around the spring and then they came and they went straight into the back of the drum brakes so we don't need that and we need some flexibility because calipers move a little and the new brake line is going to go from the caliper around the spring into a new tab that I have to weld onto the axle itself. And then from there, it'll be a hard line up. And these are our new hard lines. They're just uh, straight. They've come pre-flared on both ends, so you got nuts. And uh, they're probably not the right length. So I'm sure at least one of them I'm gonna have to cut and re-flare. But uh, yeah, they'll be here. They'll probably cut off right about here for the short side. The long side's probably gonna be out here somewhere. But the long side might actually be the right length for these. I think these are, what, 20 inch? Yeah, about 20 inch lengths. And when we do that, I ended up buying a little generic tube bender. Basically, you just kind of stick that in there, give it a squeeze, and you can kind of get some clean bends on there so it doesn't look like so it doesn't look like this homemade job that was done before where the bends are just kind of very uneven and really not bent. Hopefully it'll give it a more factory-like look like you see on this side. And if we do have to cut one or both and reflare them, I got this tool. This is actually, I'm borrowing this from a friend of mine. We'll be able to just cut it and then reflare it with this guy. I have a flaring tool, but I've had troubles using it before. It was like these two halves were slightly offset, so they just, it wouldn't go even. And then this guy wouldn't press even, like straight 90 degrees. So I had a hard time getting mine to work. So I'm gonna try his, see if his works a little better than mine did. And if his works good, then I'll buy one of those and then throw mine out. And these are just a couple of the extra parts we got going on. This is the uh, the brake lines that'll be going from the caliper to the new hard line. And then these are actually the, if you can see that, these are tabs that need to be welded onto the axle itself to hold the other end. And before we get too deep into this video, you know what time it is, we gotta get to the map. And we're at the map. So how this works is you comment where you're watching from and I'll put a pin on the map for your location. This week we got 12 more locations to add. That's 10, 12. And uh, <laughs> there's a handful of states that don't have a single pin yet. So keep calling out your state, your country, your city, whatever you want to represent. So let's get to it. First up is Grants, New Mexico. Then Burns, Oregon. Warrington, Virginia. And we got a comment for Southwest Ontario, Canada. So we're just gonna kinda stick you, oh, I don't know, right there. Then Benson, Arizona. Laurenburg, North Carolina. Sheridan, Wyoming. And our first Vermont, which is Richford, Vermont. Fleming Island, Florida. Fall Creek, Oregon, Anchorage, Alaska, and last is our first Utah, Fillmore, Utah. All right, we're doing great filling this up. There is still a handful of states that we need to get, and I'm gonna name those off right now just because I wanna see if I can trigger somebody that's watching right now to call me out. So, we don't have any from Colorado, I don't know how. I'm a big Denver Broncos fan, come on. Uh, Nebraska, Arkansas, Indiana, South Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey and Rhode Island. 
We need you guys to speak up. Couple things. Uh, first off, I put little fuzzy deals on my microphone on top of the camera. So hopefully that's not messing with the uh, sound quality at all. They're the ones that you use for, uh, for wind noise and stuff like that. I put them on there. Well, I do get some wind noise, but uh, just so that when I'm holding the camera, hopefully I'll stop putting my finger on the mic hole. Hopefully that'll give me something to feel at least. So hopefully I'll stop doing that. That'd be cool, huh? Next is, I still have stickers. Uh, we got Poots Garage stickers. If you would like one, they won't focus in. If you would like one, all you gotta do is send me your address to PootsGarage at gmail.com. That address will be in the description of the video above or wherever the description is. Maybe it's below now. Um, yeah, so uh, if you get one, do me a favor and send me the pictures back of where you put it, whether it's on your toolbox or your car, your truck, whatever, and uh, I'll put those pictures in a future video. I've got a few pictures already, so if you've sent me the pictures, don't worry, I'll get them up. Probably not on this video, because I need, I want to get a few more before, you know, I, it's nice to get a handful of pictures to put up in a, a little segment instead of just doing like one or two. Kind of makes it a little easier for me. So, so look for those in the future. And let's get to work. Now that my nose is full of rust dust, let's take a look. So the bracket's cleaned up. You can see we just hit it with the wire wheel. Nothing special. We got the spacer, we got the bolts. Those are all cleaned up. So let's hit them with the typical 415. I'm not gonna primer these because they are still kind of like rusty basically. So the 415 works better with direct contact with the rust. So hopefully that'll keep it from ever turning to crap again. painting and uh, this thing looks pretty good. Give you a little close-up look of it here. See if I can get it to zoom in. Focus in. Yeah, you can see it looks nice and fresh and clean now. You can see where I cut off the end and it's not perfect, but it'll work good. Throw a washer under there to make it look nice. But uh, yeah, let's get this in the truck real quick and uh, we can start mocking up the brake lines. All right, we are under the truck now, obviously. This is the bolt that it goes to. My impact gun is not strong enough. <sighs> Jeez. Seriously? <clears throat> Please don't break. Please don't break. Woof. Safe. Now you've probably noticed before, I sure noticed it. This diff cover looks like hell. It's uh, very rusty and nasty. I haven't painted it or anything because my plans are, once this thing's closer to running, is I need to drain these. So 
I'm gonna obviously be pulling these covers off, changing the fluid out, seal them back up, and then I'll repaint them while they're off the vehicle. But for now, this is what we're doing. There. Now we can see where our brake line is gonna be when we bolt it up. Brake line is extremely stiff right now, so I gotta manipulate it to get it in the right position. This is what we're working with right now. So our bracket fits up there like it should. I got the uh, parking, not parking, the brake hose mounted up there. It's obviously not torqued, but everything is sitting in its place. We got plenty of room for, uh, for hose movement, so that's cool. Next, we gotta start bending up the lines to come off of that little uh, three-way there and to head on down over to here. So it's kind of hard to get everything in frame here, but this is what we got. So, I need to find my bolts. Hold on. So this line here is kind of hard to figure out where I need to exactly mount it. It's a little, uh, little awkward. Especially when you can't even hold on to the stupid thing. So, if we just kind of loosely bolt our new hose on here, you can see where we gotta go. So I think the best routing for this hose is gonna actually be go underneath the leaf spring because it's a straight shot from there. And then I gotta figure out where I wanna mount it over here on the axle tube. Uh, in a position that kind of keeps the brake line from rubbing on stuff and have clearance and I don't want the brake line to get snagged on things off road. It's higher than the axle, it's on the back side of the axle. So I think it'll be okay over here. And then you obviously wanna leave enough slack in it for this caliper to move around slightly like they do. It's kinda like, I don't know, it's just like, right there, but a lot of it's also gonna determine, be determined by uh, where exactly my hard line ends up, because I don't know how precise I can be with that end either. Now this is the metal tab that I actually have to weld to the axle itself, and this is what's gonna hold the other end of that uh, soft line. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda throw it on there temporarily, put the clip on to hold it in place, try not to cut myself, because everything's really sharp. Okay, we finally got it in there. That was a little pain in the butt. See if I can get the focus in, we're good. Now we gotta put this where we kinda want it. And then uh, kinda figure out exactly what we want this brake line to do. So I kinda decided I wanna put it right about there. It seems like a good spot. There's clearance, there's plenty of slack in the line. I could go way back if I wanted to, but I think that's a little excessive. Yeah, probably right about somewhere around there. And then all I gotta do is make my hard line to go from here to here. If you can see that. That's gonna be the hard part, but that's it's a very short, it's gonna be one, two, three bins or so. So that shouldn't be too bad. I am gonna have to cut that one down for sure because it's super short. And so what I think I'll do is I'll bend it and I'm gonna get it, I'll leave all the extra length on and have it just run in parallel right along the top of the axle. And then all I have to do is cut it off right where I want it, flare it, and I'll be right there. So I've never used one of these uh, little tubing benders before like this, so this is gonna be uh, new for you and me probably. But right off the bat, I already can't get my deal threaded in, so I'm gonna have to make a, an educated guess on where to put my first bend. I wanna come back to about here, so I wanna keep it up as close as I can there and just start going, I guess, this way. But yeah, it's gonna be about a 45 or so, so let's just put it in and see what happens. Now the reviews on this tool were not that great either, so hopefully uh, hopefully it works. Let's find out. I think I just gotta go easy on it or else it might uh, kink it. Let's see what happens, huh? Nice and easy. Just do little bits. Yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Be able to go just a hair more. So I'm coming way back here still, so I think I wanna aim it, bring it in a little sharper. I don't want to bend this too tight, I don't want it to collapse. But uh, yeah, I think we need to go a little bit more to try and get it to come up closer here. That might just do the trick. It's gonna swing over, and I think that'll work. And I just gotta cut the length, reflare it, and we're done. So, now that we got it, we gotta determine exactly where I want this bracket. I'm thinking of basically lining it up at the, where, where this, uh, where the shock mount is basically welded onto the tube there. So if I kind of hold it up there, I think I can kind of take an educated guess of where 
I need this to be trimmed and then I think I also have to add maybe a quarter inch or so for the flare to fit too but that's why I'm not welding this tab on yet because I probably wouldn't be able to make that tube exact I'm not that good so I'm just gonna eyeball it and then the tab will get welded onto wherever the tube is <laughs> maybe we'll just cut it off a couple inches couple inches long and then we'll trim it down once we get a better angle at it once we get this thing fit in here a little better it'll be the real test to see how good the bends are worst case scenario you gotta tweak them a little by hand but it should be fine come on any time now there it goes nice clean cut so now i can put this where i want it and we can put a cut exactly where we want it to go so that tube goes all the way in, pretty much flush with the little bracket. Looks like it seats way back here in the fitting, so that makes it an easy little area to line up to. I can do it right here. And then we'll add just a hair for the flare, because the flare takes up a little tube. I'll put it right there. Let's cut it again. And a final test fit. Somehow it ended up way longer than I wanted. Yeah, a quarter inch or so, but it'll work just fine. Cause I'm not gonna cut it down anymore. Everything's clear, it's got plenty of room. I think we're gonna put it right there. And there's our beautiful little line. Those bends came out really good. They're not kinked. Everything looks nice and clean. Let's see, our, our angles are right where we need them. And uh, obviously don't forget your nut. I do need to deburr that little hole. That thing's kind of haggard looking, so we'll deburr that. And then uh, see about crimping this. Little ripper with the deburr tool. Yeah, looks good. Obviously, don't forget to put the nut on. Forget that after you crimp it or after you flare it, then you're then you're screwed. All right, let's see if I remember how to use one of these. One of these guys. So these are marked with sizes. I need three sixteenths. I don't remember how these work. So if I remember right, you have to use the end of this is basically. A gauge for how far it sticks out and snug these down real good on it you don't want the tube to slip through obviously so we'll go probably gonna make you sick with all these different angles and let's see what happens so this should am I doing this backwards I am doing this backwards oh, shoot I'm supposed to use the other piece first. All right, I screwed up. I'm gonna try and salvage it, see what happens. Probably not the right thing. Yep, I screwed up. Redo. Luckily I got a little extra length on this, I guess. Boy, did I screw that up bad. All right, take two. I did it wrong. Let's do it right. I cut about half an inch off the hook, the end of the line, but since we were already a hair long anyways, this actually worked out decent. So, gotta use the little adapter fitting first. See if this works correctly. So that should be, yeah, that's better. Now that it's ballooned out, now I use this one just by itself and it'll, Fold it in and make the second flare. All right. That's better. You ain't gonna believe what I just did. I forgot to put the nut on. <laughs> All right, so this is frustrating. I did exactly what you're not supposed to do, which is forget the nut. I think everybody forgets that every time they even attempt to start one of these. <sighs> So I just tested it on the vehicle and it looks like we still got enough room to do another half inch off. So we'll cut it off again. It was good practice though, right? <sighs> All right, it took three times, <laughs> but we got it. We got a nice minty looking brake line. So the only thing I don't like about these type of uh, fittings or the, uh, the tools is the way they grab onto the end of the line there. They really mar it up a lot. I don't care for that, but I mean, it's covered but that's also introducing a rust and stuff in there, so. But it works, it'll work good, it'll work fine. Perfect, ready to go. And there's the line installed, looking good, nice and square. You can see I got it uh, just threaded on here. I haven't welded that tab on yet. We'll 
let's find the perfect spot for that before we get it down. And then uh, you can see, you can see how far off I was. I was aiming to be even with this bracket here on top. So yeah, we're a half inch forward. It's not that big a deal, but that'll work. That'll work perfect. So I'm gonna knock out the other side real quick and uh, I might not have to cut that side. So let's see. this side all good so this is kind of where it's sitting right here I wanted to bring this back a hair more as far this way as I could because I was trying to keep clearance there I could have gone a little tighter there which I probably should have but the problem is I was getting real close over here and uh, I only had like an inch more of line but that put that soft line way up here so I did end up cutting what inch inch and a half off of off of this 20 inch line so had to reflare it but we did it in one shot this time I didn't forget to put the nut on so we got it and then uh, that's it maybe I should have kept it a little closer to the axle there but it's not gonna interfere with anything so I think we're good where it's at lots of lots of room lots of clearance that's our brake line all the uh, rotate you can twist the the mounting point and that'll actually rotate this up closer to the spring to keep that from, from grabbing stuff but uh yeah that's what we're looking at kind of see the lines coming over there right there that one going over there it's up out of the way i wanted them up high so that they don't get snagged on stuff like rocks or whatever so that should work good on just did uh, pretty much four little tacks on each corner that's all it really needs it's not structural or anything it's very solid so next I'm going to take all this back apart and uh, paint it because it needs some paint on there and then uh, put it back together for good and call that done we did both sides already so it's ready to go I figured uh, we'd go over a couple little little product reviews, I guess you could say. So the first one is my dash cam. This is a YI brand. I don't know how you say that. It's Chinese. It was, I don't know, it probably came off Amazon like everything else. Um, it's been good for the last few years. Uh, it's not the best quality, but it's pretty good. I had a couple uh, earlier videos. If you go way back on my channel, like probably three, four, or five years ago or something, you'll probably see. There's a video of a person spinning out after they missed a dead deer on the road. And then uh, I think I had the video of uh, somebody passed me in a ditch. Yeah, that was interesting. So yeah, there's, there's been a few good videos, but I haven't had any, nothing exciting's happened the last few years with it. But I think the cold weather out here is finally killing it. It just, it doesn't want to turn on. It keeps telling me to reformat the card. So I'm going to try and actually reformat the storage card on it see if that works but uh if not then she did um but it's been good the yi brand i don't know how you say that it's just it's yi uh it works good it always it always runs in the corner of my windshield and it you know maybe it deters some people too because it's pretty obvious up there but if i gotta buy a new one maybe i'll try to find something a little better this time. next product is a bulletproof uh phone mount I guess you could say. I'll have to give you a closer look of what we got going on here. So this is actually uh, some replacement parts. So the one I got, if you've ever seen the advertisements, probably off Facebook, I think that's where I saw them. It's a real legit company. I think they're American made and all this stuff, but they make these really nice phone mounts that, you know, they're vehicle specific. So for the Ram, it actually screws into two factory holes in the top of the dash. And then it has this real nice spring loaded, I don't know, like clamp for your phone. And it's not a phone charger, it just holds it, but it's made out of, it's got like carbon fiber arm and uh, aluminum housing and I don't know it's it's real nice units uh, but the plastic on it came disbonded from the cold weather we got out here so I hit them up and I said hey uh, 
the, the plastic has come disbonded from the carbon fiber arm. What can I do to glue it back on? And so they said, well, send us your information and this and that, and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. So they actually sent me all the replacement parts, and they actually looks like upgraded parts now too. So that's kind of cool. So I got to put all this together. Uh, here's the company here. Bullet Point Mounting Solutions. Good company. I like them. And then uh, one of the little rubber pads, it also started coming off on the uh, clamp. So they sent me a new kit for the just... They're just uh, sticky back. They're, they're like rubber pads. So they sent me the new rubber pads. So pretty cool. I got a sticker, a receipt. Obviously, they didn't charge me any of this, but these are the these are the end pieces. Pretty nice. And then this is the arm. This is the uh, carbon fiber arm. And maybe I don't remember this piece being separate, but if this one is glued inside of there, I think that's what came disbonded. So what I'll probably end up doing is actually fixing the one that's on there and saving that one to the side and maybe putting this one on just because it's fresh and ready to go. But yeah, it was kind of cool that they actually uh, sent me replacement parts after I've had it for years. And so that's a good company. So if you're uh, if you're looking for a nice phone mount for your car. Check these guys out. Might not look like it by the mess on the workbench behind me, but we're done. I'm finally done. I got uh, a little anxious. I didn't want to turn the cameras on and I just wanted to get this thing done. So we're done. It's getting late. I got to get some stuff edited. So we just finished it. So let me show you what we got. So we are completely finished now. So starting at the caliper here, we got our brake line on tight finished we went under the leaf spring you can see there's just enough clearance it's not gonna hit anything shouldn't snag anything looks pretty good up here we can see our new brackets are welded on and painted everything looks clean and finished uh, everything's tight our bracket was modified that's tight everything looks good feels good everything is awesome We finally got the rear brakes all sealed up and uh, front brakes are all done also so at this point we can continue on with installing the master cylinder that we painted like two weeks ago so that can go on but before we do that I gotta do that XJ steering shaft upgrade still so we'll get that in first and then we'll put the master over the top of that and then this is getting real close to being done so if you're still here and you haven't subscribed liked or commented make sure you do that before we sign off so I will talk to you guys later <laughs>